The skill drills contained in this video are the most effective of those in the NZRFU skill drills manual. Fox in from his own 22 by a couple of metres. Just tidies things up a little. Fitness drills. Single file running, isometric pair exercises, two twenties, power sprinting, suicides in threes and stepping over. Single file running is a useful drill to be used in warm-up. The players get warmed up by jogging and increase their leg speed as they move quickly to the front carrying the ball in two hands. The number of players can be changed as can the number of balls. These changes alter the intensity of the drill. The players can zigzag in and out of teammates ahead of them on their way to the front of the line. To develop strength among young players, peer exercises can be used. The players initially push against each other, both shoulders are used. Secondly, players can attempt to turn each other, increasing the strain. Coaches should make sure that binding is correct to ensure safety. While players may do this initially on their knees, ultimately they should do it standing. Players should be matched against players of similar size and strength. The stubborn mule develops neck strength. By remaining completely rigid, the player on the ground develops back and stomach muscles. Away we go. Reflexes are improved by players attempting to slap each other on the knees. An alternative is to grab the left wrist to the right wrist and the right wrist to the left wrist and attempt to hit each other lightly. For this drill, the team is divided into two groups. Players run at jogging speed the length of the field and then upon reaching the corner, sprint the width. The name of the player to lead the sprint should be called as the group approaches the corner and other members of the team should attempt to beat this player across the width. Leg speed is improved by resistant sprinting. This can be done by players pairing up one providing resistance, the second sprinting with short powerful strides for 20 to 30 metres. A further method is for players to hold on to their partner's shorts, providing resistance as they burst away. Players are divided into threes. One team member sprints 5 metres in return, 10 metres in return and 20 metres in return, while the second teammate rests and the third teammate does press-ups or sit-ups. Initially, players lie less than one metre apart and the players high knee raise as they step over those ahead of them. Group size can vary, the bigger the group, the faster the players are able to run. Secondly, players can stand three to four metres apart. This encourages players to stride out. The ball can now be introduced and a pop pass can be made by players as they simulate going to ground in the tackle. The pass must be high enough and with enough hang time for teammates to run onto the ball. Finally, the ball can be placed, lifted and gut passed to the teammate. Passing drills are ball familiarisation, two triangles, press up and pass, zigzag passing, group passing, congested passing, corner passing and quick hands. Pass the ball around the head both ways, around the waist and around the knees and ankles. Repeat these familiarisation drills with the eyes closed. Close your eyes. On your knees. Keep your eyes closed. Eyes open. 
Legs spread, figure eights. Like figure eights through the legs can be added as a further variation. Back to front, most of you doing back to front, good. From the front through to the back. Toss the ball in the air. And finally, front, front to back, back to front. We'll drill, go. Saturate number eight with as many passes as possible. Add in one more ball. Players must learn not to pass the ball to a player who is not ready. After each pass, the passer does a burpee or a press up. A number of balls are passed zigzag down a line using a chest pass. Once the player has passed all the balls, they run to join the end of the line, waiting once again for their turn. Now use a rugby pass. More than one ball can be used. Passes must be at chest height. Move back and forth across a grid, giving and taking a pass. Vary the distance to run to increase or reduce intensity. Players should receive the ball early, dip slightly into the pass, sink at their hips and make a good pass to the space in front of a teammate who is to receive the ball. By numbering each side of the grid, one, two, three or four, groups run across the grid, passing the ball on the coach's call. The groups may run past each other and across each other. This encourages players to retain possession and only pass to a player who is ready to receive the ball. Players group at corners approximately 20 metres apart. They run strongly towards the next corner and make a pass to the first receiver in the next group. The pass should be made in front of the player so that the player can turn towards the ball. The grubber kick and chip kick can also be used. Players run towards each other, developing quick hands. While this is not a rugby pass, the speed of hand movement is a worthwhile skill to develop. Slow down a bit. Slow down. The pass are getting too hard. Gentle hands. Gentle hands. Running and handling skills. Truck and trailer. Doubling round. Passing in fives. Maintaining the flow. Running in channels. Back and forth. Running straight. And continuous touchdown. Players pair up. The ball carrier is the truck, the partner the trailer, and wherever the truck goes, the trailer must follow. The truck must carry the ball in two hands. This develops evasive running skills. Secondly, on the coach's whistle, the truck places the ball on the ground. The trailer scoops up the ball and the rolls are changed. Thirdly, the ball is transferred using a gut pass on each whistle. Create space on the outside by dipping back in the direction from which the pass has been received. In this drill, the number three runner is saturated with passing, while those on both sides give and take a pass and then move towards a supporting position on the opposite side of the line. This encourages players to balance in support of the ball carrier. In order to prevent the ball being isolated on the sideline, players maintain the flow by moving inside so their teammate can scissor pass with them moving back in field. Players are numbered one to five and passes are made in this order. Using odd numbers ensures that players must first receive the ball on one side of the channel and then on the other. The aim of this drill is to saturate the centre runner with as much passing as possible. Add a second runner. Now three or four passes have to be made in the same space. Finally, players can practice the arms through pass. 
It is important in this drill that the receiver delays so that the pass can be floated in front of them. The team is divided into three groups, numbering one, two and three. On the coach's call, one member from each group runs onto the halfback's pass. The receiver calls the side and the positioning close or wide. Add opposition so that players are now practicing a two-on-one. They may move into a second gate, a third gate and even a fourth gate. As pace is generated, the distance between gates should be increased to allow players time to pass. The number of defenders can be increased, as can the number of attackers. In continuous touchdown, players practice the two-on-three situation. Initially, they practice the overlap, with defenders marking designated attackers, leaving the overlap. Secondly, miss passes can be made. The defenders are told to mark specific players in the attack. In the first instance, the defenders stay on their opposite number, creating space for the penetrating player in the red jersey. In the second example, the first receiver's defender drifts off to the penetrator, allowing this player to dummy and go. In the third situation, the second defender drifts into the penetrating player, allowing the penetrating player to be missed and penetration to occur by the third player. Once these skills are known, the players can operate freely. In this example, four players mark three and are given a number of turns to put into practice the skills they have learned. If frequent errors occur, it is important that players return to a more controlled situation. Kicking and catching. Peer kicking. A number of balls may be used. The kicking team tries hard to land the ball in the catching team zone, scoring one point. Increasingly in the game, the kick has to be used as a means of getting behind the opposition defence. When kicks of this type are made, it is very important that the players can recover the ball. Tackling drills. Getting the right lines, calling numbers, and repetition tackles. For the side-on tackle, it is important that the player gets the right line. Here, using the left shoulder, the players come back around the cone and tackle each tackle bag in turn. One, two. Two players move out and on the coach's call, tackle bags in succession. If a player is moving to a bag whose number has already been called and a further number is called, that player breaks off from that bag and moves immediately to the new number. A number of tackle bags are placed less than three metres from each other and the tackler tackles each bag quickly in succession. Make sure the correct shoulder is used. The tendency can be that the player puts their head in front of the bag rather than behind. Make sure your head goes behind the bag, not in front of it. Head behind the bag. You're all favouring your right shoulders. And half the tackles are Support play skill drills. Left and right options, no mistakes, against one defender and rotation. The receiver calls the side to which they want the ball passed in order to take advantage of the positioning of defensive players. The ball is popped into space, the ball carrier moving to one side to enable the receiver to run straight onto the ball. Once the pass is received, the ball carrier should burst five metres and then slow down to allow teammates to come in support. Ultimately, numbers need not be called, but the ball carrier, by moving, to one side or the other and floating the ball into space creates space for the teammate. The team can be divided into groups. One group becomes tacklers, equally placed down a channel, while the second group moves down the channel, moving into the tackle, making passes to supporting teammates. A development of this drill is when the tackler tackles the ball carrier, straddles the body, lifts the ball and passes to a supporting teammate. The tackler tackles the man, straddles the ball carrier's body 
and gut passes to a support player. The defenders come from one side. They are equally placed down the grid and cannot move forward but may move across. If they move too far across, the ball carriers should sell the dummy and take the space to link up with teammates outside. This can be further developed by allowing the defenders in black to move forward and finally to have them stand in line with the potential ball carrier. This encourages players to spread the ball if space is available on the outside or alternatively to penetrate if the defender has moved too wide. This can be further developed by having both backs and forwards rotate round two channels. The forwards can use rucking and mauling, while the backs can use passing drills. All the time we are encouraging players to observe where the opposition are and if they are spread to penetrate through and if they are grouped to move the ball wide. Down the channel. This is a game situation and errors will occur and give the coach some indication of the skills that need to be developed in a less contested situation. The main error that does occur is that receivers get too flat and find they are receiving the passes in an awkward position behind their body. They have to stop in order to catch the ball. This is because they are initially not standing deep enough. Drive into the pink. Good. Go, Ronnie, Ronnie. Right, now come into the pink, Brent. Three. Push them. Pick it up. Away we come. Too flat. Right, into there, Jacob. Individual skills performed by your team will result in play like this. Attacking for Auckland. Newly at here with Jones running once more. Socks down, pounding up towards the 22. Auckland ball once more. Stensness. Howarth is in. Satutu. And out wide was Fitzpatrick, but he's not needed. Satutu gets his second. It's two for Satutu.